Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brian Panovich here. We do have some strong to severe storms heading our way for Monday. And the timing, unlike our last couple of systems, which were potent systems, this one seems to be lining up more in that maximum heating of the day. We're talking mid to late afternoon into the early evening hours. And that always is a much bigger concern because that provides more fuel for the storm. So this is today's outlook. So Sunday, March 30th, you're looking at the current outlook today to our west. So we should be safe. We're going to see some scattered showers, increasing humidity. Good news for the wildfires. This will help with the fighting. I will emphasize this. None of the rain or storms heading your way are going to put the fires out. That's almost impossible unless you get days and days of widespread rain. It's more going to help get control of these fires. So that's what you should be thinking about with these fires. Tomorrow, though, look at the risk moves into the Carolinas. You see the area in orange and red. The red is our higher risk, which is enhanced from the Storm Prediction Center. But for our purposes, we call this the high risk because it kind of fits more to a higher risk for the Carolinas. You see the area in red and orange, and this is primarily driven by the risk for tornadoes. The thing to remember about the risk of tornadoes, I think people think there's going to be this thousand mile wide tornado that's going to sweep across the Carolinas. That's not the way it works. These will be isolated or scattered tornadoes. They're very small. But where they actually occur is always the difficult part. So even if we get two or three, that means most people are not going to see a tornado. But where they do occur, that's the concern. In the yellow area, that is a 10% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a point on the map. So 10% is pretty significant for us. 5% is where we start really paying attention. But 10% is pretty significant. you got to remember, normal day, the chance of a tornado is zero. So 10% is a huge increase from a normal day. So you can't look at it the same as you do for rain chances because you're not getting wet. This is the chance of a tornado. So 10% probability of a tornado in that area. So let's get right to the future cast. All right, we'll start with our high resolution rapid refresh. It's the model we run every hour. This goes out 48 hours. This is the morning run, the 12Z run. So you can see kind of a messy setup early on today. Um, you can see there will be some scattered showers trying to move into the Carolinas. Just don't expect a ton of rain, but the good news is some rain just the same. We'll go into the afternoon hours. The time is right there. This is four o'clock this afternoon. We get to about 5.30, 6 o'clock. These will be our best chances of rain coming in this evening. So if you want to get something done like mow the lawn, do whatever outside, do it early today because the later we get, um, we'll see a better chance of rain. Martinsville race up in, uh, in Virginia should be fine as well. Most of the rain holds off till tonight. You see the line of storms. So this is midnight tonight going into Monday morning. Pretty nasty line of storms you can see moving in from the west. We'll get into the wee hours of the morning and I'll pause this right around sunrise, which is close to 7.30. Um, you can see the line of storms. It'll be weakening by this time. This is the coolest part of the day, um, but it's still far to our west. So the timing of this is more crucial because this allows for strong southerly winds to pump in warm, humid air for most of the afternoon east of the mountains. And this will set the stage for potentially strong storms. So we get after sunrise here, uh, that first line weakens, and then we get into the afternoon. Now, right now, the short range models have been kind of all over the place. And the thing about modeling, I need to emphasize this. This isn't exactly what's going to happen. Modeling is a tool. It is not a forecast. OK, um, and modeling tries to show you really precise locations of things, but precision is not the same as accuracy. So when we look at guidance as a meteorologist, we don't take it as a word of, of the Lord here. This is basically a general idea of where there could be storms. So these storms could be here, they could be here, they could be here. There's a general error range within there. So you see this cluster of storms. Look at the time, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. If these are isolated like this, these potentially could be rotating thunderstorms. So that's always a concern when we see discrete cells on the guidance shows us that there possibly could be supercells. So middle of the afternoon, those are moving through the Piedmont. And again, the precise location, it could be over Winston-Sam, could it be over Charlotte, could be further south, somewhere in this area. Don't get too caught up to, to precise locations because it's this general area we're watching. Big cluster down here. So between these two, this will change with every run of the models. That's why you don't get caught up in this. But you see the timing, mid to late afternoon. So if I'm looking at the worst weather, looks like after three o'clock, through about early evening, so that evening commute. If I just say anything, 1 to 6 p.m. maybe might be the timing of this, the worst storms. You could see them pushing through. Um, and then after sunset, they're racing off to the east, and they're out of here. Let me show you a couple other parameters um, that we look at quite a bit. Significant tornado parameter. Not as crazy as it was yesterday, but you could see right in here, and again, this is around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We've got some one or twos in there showing up um, as this little cluster moves through. And that little isolated cluster, that's that's the one 
that has them, has me concerned. Not that I think it's going to be right there. Again, remember, precision's not the same as accuracy. When we look at the rotation tracks here, um, right away people go, oh, I'm in this track. Yeah, there's a couple rotating storms, but remember, these could be here. They could be here. They could be here. They could be a little further north. Generally, somewhere in here, we're going to see rotation um, from a couple storms. That's why the area is under that medium to high risk. So don't look at the precise location. Just know we need to be aware in this area. That means most people will be okay, but the areas tomorrow when we see these storms set up and we start tracking them, we'll have a really good idea on where they're headed. But you get an idea there. Um, there's definitely some rotation tracks. And again, that, that kind of jives perfectly with what the Storm Prediction Center's put out with our medium risk. And it's primarily because of that tornado risk. Now let's take a look at the risk over the next couple of days um, using some of the AML. You see the risk today. There's our risk tomorrow. Notice it could shift to the south still, and that's still a possibility. So that's a trend to watch. But then the middle of the week, another storm heads our way, and we could be doing this all over again in the Carolinas on Thursday. So don't let your guard down. This is going to be an active week. We're going into March. Typically, this is when we see our severe weather. But tomorrow, between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m., we're watching the risk for uh, strong thunderstorms, possibly severe, with some isolated tornadoes. Tornado risk is the highest uh, we've seen so far this spring. It's around 10%. Doesn't mean everyone's going to see a tornado, but that risk is there. And that's why we need you to stay weather aware on Monday.